Breaking tonight at 6, the city on edge after the release of body camera video showing a deadly officer involved shooting. It happened last month in a Burger King parking lot. The victim identified as Dequaris Franklin. In the aftermath of the fatal encounter, we heard very different stories about what happened from several eyewitnesses. That's why we went to court to get the video. Absolutely, and we want to be fully transparent with what we are reporting. And we do want to warn you, while we are being respectful and cautious, this video is still graphic and some will find it very hard to watch. This morning, the mayor and police chief asking everyone to remain calm and peaceful once the video was released. CMPD is saying that they are aware of several planned protests similar to what we saw in the hours after the shooting. Fred Shropshire off the anchor desk tonight. He's live at CMPD headquarters. So, Fred, while this video clears up some questions, there are still some left unanswered. Yes, Aaron Xavier, it is still unknown what Denquarius Franklin was doing with that gun. Here's what we can verify, though. We know there were several 911 calls made that morning of March 25th, the first coming approximately at 9 a.m. From the calls, we heard witnesses say Franklin had a gun and was pointing it and threatening employees. In the newly released body camera video, you can see police arriving on the scene where they encounter Franklin in the parking lot some four minutes later. Then you hear officers tell him more than a dozen times to drop his gun. That's when you hear officers fire two shots. We have live team coverage on this video. It took a court order for us to get our uh, Richard Devane is in Marshall Park where protesters are standing by calling for justice this evening. But first we want to get to NBC Charlotte defender Nathan Morbido, who's been going over this video frame by frame to determine exactly what was going on as this unfolded. Nate. Hey there, Fred. We showed this video th to three different experts, and one of those experts told us he believes this will be considered a justified shooting. His name is Quentin Williams. You may have heard of him. He wrote the book How Not to Get Killed by the Police. He's a former FBI agent. And he says it's much like the Keith Scott case, saying when there's a weapon and noncompliance, the shooting is generally considered justified. Burger King on Baby Four Road. Somebody, um, ran up to my car and looked like he was pulling out a gun. What started with panic 911 calls about a man with a gun brought two officers to this Burger King and led them to demanding this man drop his gun. Sir, put the gun down. Again. Drop the gun. And again. Drop the gun. And again. I said drop it. At least 17 times over the course of 40 seconds. All while another person sat in the passenger seat of this car near Danquarius Franklin, who was crouching. I would imagine the officers had some concern about that individual because he was so close. Dr. Vivian Lord is a former law enforcement officer and a current criminal justice professor at UNC Charlotte. She walked us through all of the factors police considered in this moment, from those 911 calls beforehand to properly identifying the suspect to everyone's safety. How dangerous is this individual? How vulnerable is the person that's in the car? How vulnerable are all the other people in the car? How vulnerable are we as officers? Over the course of the officer's demands, not only did Franklin not respond for most of it, it wasn't until this moment that he even moved, shifting his hands and then holding what one expert told us appeared to be a gun, holding it from the top. That's when the officer fired two shots. In the seconds after, you could hear Franklin saying, you told me to before slumping over. Experts say a shooting can be justified and you can still question the tactics police use. And that's what Seth Stoughton told me. He's from the University of South Carolina, a law professor there, a former police officer. He's wondering why these police officers, particularly the person who fired those fatal shots, didn't find a safer area to talk to this man from, wondering that if there was a bit of a safer environment for the police officers, they may have been willing to give Franklin even more chances to drop the weapon. But of course, there was a person in that car right next to Franklin, and Stoughton told me he cannot make any conclusions based on just this video. We want to point out today, too, that CMPD now plans on presenting its investigation to the district attorney in just two weeks. Reporting live, Nathan Morabito, NBC Charlotte. 
All right, Nate, thank you. Yeah, the video is showing just a small window of what took place there. We know there were two officers who responded. Of course, tonight there are lots of questions about the officer who fired her weapon. Here's what we can tell you about the officer. Her name is Wendy Curl. She is a veteran with the department. She has been with CMPD since April of 1995 and is assigned to the Metro Division. She is currently on paid administrative leave during this ongoing investigation, which is a standard protocol. Chief Kerr Putney says following this shooting, Officer Curl perceived an imminent and deadly threat. The shooting sparking protest in the days and hours after all of this happening. And we know the protesters are really upset about this. Uh, joining us now, NBC Charlotte's Richard Devane from Marshall Park, where there is now a renewed call for justice this evening. Richard? Yeah, we can tell you basically, Fred, uh, talking about that video, uh, that body cam footage that you saw and that everyone is taking a look at. I spoke to the person who was closest to Denarius Franklin when he was shot and killed. He didn't want to go on camera, but told me he was there. That's the person who was inside the car, sitting inside the car. He and Franklin had just prayed together. He said he thought the situation was calm. He turned, and that's when he heard the shot. And as far as the incident, he says just reliving the entire incident is something that he'll live with for the rest of his life, but right now he's trying to get on the best he can. As for the Franklin family, they're asking for privacy at this time as everyone tries to come to grips with that video that they saw. Joseph Grimes has cut hair in the Beatty's Ford community for nearly three decades. He knows the people and the pain many say they're feeling after watching the shooting of Aquarius Franklin two weeks ago. You know, it's obvious that they was trying to get the guy to put the gun down, and he didn't. We showed him the body cam footage given to us by police. Grimes says while the incident is tragic, it could have been avoided. The gun is laying on the ground and he's away from it. It's still a deadly weapon. And um, in that case, you know, it ended up the way that it did. Some like the leader of the Charlotte NAACP chapter don't agree with Grimes. To put it down and he gets shot. There was no imminent danger. And so this mantra that cops are using to kill black lives and get away with it, that's going to stop. That is going to stop. I think it's sad. I think it's um, horrific to watch. Um, I think a lot of things could have been different. Yeah, and that's what a lot of people seem to be uh, keying in on today. They're actually saying that they're concerned about the fact that the officers acted so quickly and did not assess the situation a little bit better. Those are some of the protesters who have assembled here. They plan on having a protest, they said, starting at 6 o'clock. Of course, there were a number of rallies and, and incidents going on around the city of Charlotte. Of course, we'll be at some of them, and we'll give you information on them coming up later. But for now, right here at Marshall Park, Richard Devane. NBC Charlotte. Okay, Richard, thank you. And along with the protests, the conversations over this, these encounters will continue. We know that CMPD will be hosting back-to-back -back community forums. Chief Kerr Putney leading a conversation about the role police officers play in our communities. There's one tomorrow at East Stonewall AME Zion Church and another Wednesday at Little Rock AME Zion Church. Both forums are from 6.30 until 8 p.m. This is a conversation and engagement that police have been working on for years, but really this took off just a couple of years ago after the Keith Scott shooting in 2016, these forums around town to improve engagement. And also, we are able to show you this police video as an effort for the police to be transparent. Another thing that we saw happen from the Keith Scott shooting, hopefully these conversations and this transparency will help in the response to this. Sarah, Xavier. All right, Fred, thank you. And of course, we will continue to follow this story as it develops. When we aren't on air, you can find the very latest inside the NBC Charlotte mobile app.